Today, I'm gonna to give you some information and advice on how to wear your finger picks so you can make your own decision on what is right. Hello guys, thank you so much for pushing that play button. I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoy banjo content, tips and advice on how to play the banjo guys, you've found the right place, please consider hitting that subscribe button because that's all I post on this channel. All right guys, today we're gonna to talk about finger picks. Now that's the question that I had when I first started is, uh, where do you wear your finger picks? How do you wear them? Where, how far should they be out? Should they be curled up? Should you mess with them? Should you do this, do that to them? I had a lot of questions starting out and I'm thinking that a lot of other people probably have that same question if they're beginning the banjo on how to wear their finger picks or what to wear on their finger picks. Now, I'm not really gonna get into which brand of finger picks on this video because I've already done that. If you're interested in knowing what brands of finger picks that I use or I recommend, I put another video up about that, guys, and I'll put a link right here if you're interested in watching that. You can click the link and watch that video. Today, I wanna more or less talk about how to wear your finger picks. Now, before I get started, I just wanna let everybody know that wearing finger picks is a person-to-person -person deal. Each person has a certain way they like to wear their finger picks on their fingers. There's no really true right way. If it feels right to you and you can play the banjo, then don't let anybody tell you you're wearing them wrong unless. <laughs> this is one I have yet to see as far as people being able to play this way. Don't wear them on the front of your fingers. Put them underneath your fingers like that. Uh, that's how you want to wear your finger picks. Don't put them on top. The only way that I can tell you that you're going to wear your finger picks wrong is if you wear them on top. Now, there may be people that play that way or do some kind of deal that way, but I've never seen it. First thing, guys, is shaping your banjo picks. Now, I know a lot of people that like a lot of curve in their banjo picks. I know a lot of people that like to bend it up like right in front of the way in front of their finger. And they, and especially the spoon type, they like to bend it up and around there. I've never really gotten in. I didn't want to get into, have to get into a whole lot of, if I got new banjo picks, I didn't want to have to go through a whole ordeal on how to find a way to shape my spoons every time the same way I had it before because what you'll get into is you'll never shape them the same way as you did on the pair that you like for some reason. I never did, I don't know why. Uh, I never did like that. So I always try to get the, the picks straight from the manufacturer and then just fit it to my finger and let the shape of the spoon be what it is because it's the same every time I got it from the manufacturer. All I had to do is fit it to my finger and I was ready to go. So that's why I never really messed with the shape of the spoon a whole lot. The next thing too on your finger picks, guys, is the distance out from your finger to the tip of what you're working on with here. You can see that my index finger is a lot further out than my middle finger as far as the distance between here and here. And the main reason behind that is, is as you can see, my of course, my middle finger is a lot longer than my index finger. And so as I'm picking, my middle finger has got a lot more reach to it to reach those sprint strings down there. So I don't need this as far out on my finger in order to get the hit the strings. And what happens is if I get it out too far, I start getting it wadded up in the strings. I guess you could say it gets hung up in the strings and all that stuff. So I try to get it back as far as I can on my middle finger because I've got the reach. Uh, I don't need as much. Now my index finger, I don't have the reach that I have like to reach strings. And so I noticed as I was playing, I would miss strings with my index finger. And so I kept sliding this out uh, on my finger until I got to the point to where I was hitting the strings pretty easily and I wasn't trying to strain or having to think about it. It was just hitting the strings, you know, regardless. So that's, that's the main thing you can try to figure out is how hard or easy it is to hit the strings. If you're getting wadded up in the strings as you're picking, like if you're getting hung up, and the strings, then you may want to slide your pick back a little bit on your finger because you've got too much reach. And if it's like, if you feel like you're missing a string, like you're picking and you're missing a string as you're playing, like you might miss a certain string with your index finger, then try sliding this out a little bit. And it ain't a whole lot. It ain't, it ain't like a quarter of an inch or anything. Like I think the movement when I slide mine in and out, when I was messing with it, and we're talking about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch either way to get to where I was hitting the string regularly without missing. And once you get that distance figured out, then you'll kind of know. It'll become less of a problem later on the more you play, but it is something to think about early on, especially if you're missing strings and stuff, kind of where if you want to position your, position your picks on your finger. And then the bands around them, guys, when you're wrapping your bands around your, uh, you want it to where it comes off pretty easy. Uh, not real easy. I mean, you want to you want like kind of like a kind of like a press fit almost on your finger as you're pushing it on there, to where it's on there and it ain't moving, but it it, it ain't it ain't like cutting your circulation off to your finger. Because if you make them too tight on your finger, 
it'll hurt and it, it's not fun at all. They'll dig into your cuticles on the ends right here. So I try to make it as loose as possible up here at the top where it don't dig into my cuticles. Around the sides is where I hold most of my pressure right here on my picks as I'm making them. This one, you can see I've had to overlap it to get it tight enough, but the pick on the side is mainly where it's holding the pressure at right here. The top is just kind of there just to keep it on my finger, I guess you could say. Now, a lot of people get sweaty fingers and they start getting to where their picks will slide off. Uh, they make some stick them and I've never really had to use it, so I'm not that up on it, but they do make some stick them, like uh, in the, they put on football gloves or baseball gloves, tree sap or something that you can kind of put on your finger if you're getting ready to play for a while. Put that pick up on it and it'll, it'll keep that pick stuck up on there pretty good. Uh, I have seen people put picks on that have it slide off all the time, and you can use the uh, sports tape, the white sports tape, and maybe like you see, maybe wrestlers put on, you know, around their around their finger, that little bitty strip they put around. You can do the same thing with your picks. You can just put a white strip of that uh, uh, sports tape around, you know, to kind of hold your pick on if you have a problem with it slipping off all the time. I really don't. I can't remember the last time I've had it slide, my picks fly off my finger. Uh, so that hasn't been a really major problem for me, but I have seen people try those things I just told you about, and it works out well. Now on your thumb pick, guys, the thumb pick is the same as your pick here, as far as the distance from the finger to here, <clears throat> the same just kind of theory behind my thumb pick or what I, what I try to do on my thumb pick. Now I know a lot of people will wear their thumb picks out here on the end like this, which is fine if that's what you feel like. It makes me feel more in control of my thumb pick the closer I get it to my knuckle right here, the closer I can get my thumb pick to my knuckle, the more in control I feel of my thumb pick, I guess you could say. Also, it feels like it gives me more power, more uh, ump behind my picking on my thumb, and I feel like it's a shorter, shorter distance in order to move like to the inner strings and outer strings and stuff. I, can, I feel like I can get there a lot easier and I'm more accurate when it's closer to my knuckle. Now, like I said, I know a lot of people that use it and get it out here closer to, to the end of their thumb, which is fine too. If the, if you get used to playing it that way, it's a lot longer. You get a lot. You can get a lot more reach out of it that way. I guess you could say it's a lot further out of the way your finger picks as you're playing up and down the strings. But I just always liked it being up closer to my knuckle, just because it gives me the security. I, maybe it's just in my head, but the security of feeling more accurate with it down here. Once I got my hand position right on the on the banjo to where my thumb was out in front of my finger picks where they wasn't on top of each other, uh, once I got my hand position right and turned and my thumb was out and my fingers were back and I was picking, then once it got, then I could move it up to my knuckle and I hadn't had a problem since. So that's kind of a, the two things that you can kind of decide on whether you want it up close to your knuckle or out further away. Either way is fine, whichever makes it more comfortable for you. Uh, I'm just giving you my opinion on why I do it the way I do it. All right, guys, I hope this video has helped you all out, and I greatly appreciate you all pushing that play button, guys. If you hit that like button, it'll help out tremendously. With that being said, we will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.